Hey, I'm Brooke Sheffield. We're at Fighter Fox Farms. The fields behind us are all USDA certified organic, and we don't put a lot into them. We kind of let Mother Nature manage herself. We've chosen to have a fairly hands-off strategy. So what you can see is a lot of natural growth between the rows. We want to make sure we've got a lot of erosion control. We've got a big creek right behind us, and we get a lot of rain in this area. So by growing with a seed and getting a really good tap root, these plants have great drought resistance because they're tapping into the water table that is naturally available here between the high mountain area and the watershed down to the low creek. As a farmer, we have to prove the genetics first before we can take them to the field. First and foremost, we grow some of the best genetics in the world. Proper practices, proper fertilization, and understanding this plant. Ultimately, I think that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful with our quality and our yield. These fields produce over a thousand pounds an acre of USDA certified organic hemp, and those make some of the best full spectrum oils you can buy all over. Our polyfilm up top is kind of white, so it does a little diffusion. So we don't get hot spots in here. Nice. In a lot of greenhouses, man, sometimes the temperature's hot, the poly's clear, these evaporative cooling walls can drastically drop the temperature. Kind of like your vegetable boxes are, oh, you know okay. what I mean? Right. In incoming air is gonna go over this cool, wet pad. Wow. And that's gonna actually put the water in here, in the air, which is gonna lower the temperature, right. increase the humidity, and give these plants a break from the Incredible. summer heat. That's it's awesome. reverse radiator or something. Yeah. I dig it, man. We've already got so many other things built into this to kind of drop the temperature, but this is just another added benefit. But I mean, this is this is the textbook cannabis producing greenhouse. This is a Nexus Teton package with light deprivation. We can close the roof in a few minutes and make it totally black in here. The plant responds to daylight hours differently. And so longer days produce vegetative growth, kind of like in the spring, as we're approaching the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year. After the longest day of the year, as light goes down, the plant is triggered to flower. And so indoors, we do that, but instead of taking weeks to make the day shorter or longer, we use either indoor lighting to make the day longer, or we can push a button and close the roof and initiate flowering that way. There are a number of different techniques, but the most standard technique is 12 hours on, 12 hours off for flowering. And during the vegetative stage, at least 18 hours and up to 24 commercial operation like this I keep it simple stupid this is real simple as you can see it's very effective long story short tank we had water we had fertilizer and then we can choose which rows to send the fertilizer to I'm picking which tube it goes to and it's pretty simple it's just a little fertigation system we don't want to spray anything even organic stuff so our best bet is to purchase predatory mites and different bugs that can combat all the stuff that we're worried about getting. We're 100% aphid free from what we can tell. There are a few spider mites in the house, but we're certified organic. There will always be a balance of pests and predators and things like that. Sure. This bag's got some vermiculite in it. Okay. Just uh, where the mites would live, we use a, a blend of Californicus and Swirsky, and they climb out and they'll attack all the, uh, the negative pests that we're trying to get rid of. 1,000 watt high pressure sodiums, double enders like these. Right. You can't beat them, man. Nah. You really can't. Oh, proven performance. Oh, yeah. Cannabinoids are basically compounds. They can be manufactured by plants. It can be manufactured by the human body. The human body makes its own cannabinoids by the endocannabinoid system. Plant makes them through photosynthesis. And so phytocannabinoids are a version of a compound that work well in the human body to promote balance. They're also in plants. And just as many plants and animals and humans have symbiotic relationships on Earth, cannabis and humans have always had some type of relationship, and I think that's expressed in the, in the chemistry of it. This is what I've always dreamed You're of. You're doing it right, yeah, man. This is a nice setup. Everybody's got testimonials. Everybody's got stories. We can't wait to hear it. Check us out on letsbeblunt.org. We're going to be coming at you live. A lot of content. we got a lot to talk about, and we can't wait to share it. Thank you.